Hello everyone, this is Nicole Clausen with Veterinary Care Logistics and I am so happy to be back here with you today. So today what I wanted to talk about is how to set up um, the inventory screen in Avamark. So we're going to go over a couple different features and how I like to have things set up. So the first thing we're going to look at here, we're just going to go up into our inventory list by pressing the RX button there and we're going to look at diazepam, okay? The injectable. So, just kind of want to go over a couple features here. So here we have the code. Um, you can either have the code set up as like your manufacturer code number or a set thing in your system, but one thing about Avamark, once you set a code, it gets really, really grumpy if you change that. So either have a standard system or a standard way of setting it up. So no matter who is setting up or adding um, an inventory item, it always has a consistent format. Um, here in the description, I always put the product, the concentration. If it's like if you sell something per bag, per vial, per bottle, whatever, sometimes I like to add in here, like let's say if the diazepam was only sold per vial, I put in vial just to give kind of more clarification to make sure that it gets charged appropriately. So I feel like the easier things are to dispense, the more consistent um, they'll be. And then we have over here, this is your on hand amount, the location, and you can change this to however or wherever your items are in the hospital. Makes things easy for counting and keeping track and things whatnot. So the action code here, there's a whole host of different action codes here. So V means there's an intravenous injection fee. We want, usually, we want an injection fee on really any injectable. That kind of covers your cost of the time it takes to inject the medication, the syringe, the needle, all of that's kind of rolled up into that injection fee. The C in Avamark um, notates that it's a controlled substance. The other thing about controlled substance is if you're putting a label on it, all the way down here at the bottom, this for veterinary use only, they'll have to be marked for controlled substances. So, and then we come over here to the price. This is where you see the price per mill. This is the cost, and this is the package cost. Okay, so this is your most recent order history. So, the a bottle of diabetes of pan probably did not cost 12 cents, so we'll just Go ahead and update this to a little more realistic number here. So now it shows that the package cost for a vial is $80. The cost of a mill is $1.60 and the price to the client is $5.38 plus the injection fee that we already um, said we wanted over here. Okay, so that's kind of what that means right here. Here we have the measure so we could change it to mill, vial, bottle, whatever we want it to do. Over here this is kind of your special fees table so you can have a holding fee or you know really any kind of fee you wanted. You can add a photo, here's a category, the expiration date, um, here's the UPC and here you can put in NSDS information if you wanted. So Right here we get into, let's say for example, that if they bought an entire vial, you would give them a break price, and that's where you would enter this here. So like, let's say if you wanted to say, um, if they bought, let's say 10 mils, you would charge them $150, for example. Um, so you can go ahead and enter this here. Really the only time I would really recommend that is, um, well, not usually ever, but in, in if you wanted to, you could add it to like cases of food or something like that. And then if we go over here to this markup area, now this one is really important. So the markup percent when you receive a purchase order into Avamark, that markup percent will tell you exactly how much you want to um, basically mark that product up. So if there are a price increase or anything like that, it'll automatically increase that price for you so you don't have to go back in and manually do that. So the markup is based off of this information right here. So let's say, see we changed this to $80. 
but it still shows over here that this is our markup cost and our unit cost. So we have to update this as well to make sure that it both shows accurately. So the markup package cost is the average cost that you've received an item for. So let's say, for example, you had to like on emergency run up to the human hospital and get a vial of this and it turned out to be like $130, let's say. When you receive that into Avamark, it'll make the markup package costs increase because again, it takes like the average that you've received that item for. So you'll see this number fluctuate. So again, this is the average price that you've received the item and over here is your most recent information. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And then here you can enter in species or if let's say you only wanted this to be like an over-the-counter item and not charged to a doctor, you can put that here, otherwise you can leave that blank. Okay, so this is kind of the scoop on the general tab here. If we go over here to the advanced, you can put in a follow-up if you want. Here's contract prices, documents, um, the pharmacy. So here is kind of where you can control the number of amount of refills. And then right here is also the information that you can use for controlled substances. Um, if you wanted to track it in Avamark, it's not my favorite way to do it just because I like to have a lot more information than what Avamark charges, or doesn't charge, but um, allows you to see. But if you wanted to um, start this, let's say you just started doing this. So diazepam, you had one container with what is diazepam? I think it comes in like 10 mil vials. So we'll say that it has 10 mils. So then every time it's this is prescribed to a patient, it'll kind of keep track of the bottles. The biggest reason why I don't like to um, have it solely on electronic version is if somebody forgets to add something or something like that, it's hard to have a double check to go back on. So just making sure you have some kind of double check when it comes to controlled substances or make sure that things are always being entered. Um, okay, that's a little off topic, but we'll go over here and this is the purchasing tab here. This has a lot of information too. So here is your on order amount. Here is your order pack. So this order pack is really important because it shows um, what size it is. So um, like it looks like the 50 is not right but regardless this can have however many tablets mills whatever and it will automatically update the price for you so like let's say we'll go back to our example what do we say 80 80 dollars it'll automatically divide 80 by 50 to get your one dollar and sixty cent unit cost so um, let's say, for example, we got in a different kind and for some reason it had 20 mils. See, it'll auto update that price for you can, so you can see exactly what's happening. So this is really important to have the order pack. So what you'll do is this will be in basically the unit that it sold. So for example, let's take um, like a metronidazole injectable. So usually for a metronidazole injectable, the patient is charged for the entire bag. So even though it has, can you remember how many mils it has in it? It's either 50 or 100. But because it's charged to the patient per bag, the order pack would be one. But if for an instance you sold it per mil, let's say it has 20 mils in it, you would enter 20 in here and then it'll, again it'll auto calculate that price for you. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then so over here this is where you set up your reorder points. So right here this says okay when I have three mils on hand I want to um, order 10 more. So this is kind of where you can put in your reorder points. The allocated quantity is interesting. So the allocated quantity is the amount that has been prescribed to a patient but that's not checked out yet. So it's still blue on their account somewhere. So let's say if you had a bottle of gabapentin 
and it was prescribed to a patient. It's waiting up front to be picked up, but it's not checked out. It'll show here as a negative one in the allocated. Um, here's where you can put the manufacturer um, number, your main vendor. So there's a lot of information that's in here. Over here, um, now this isn't going to have any sales um, information just because this isn't really an active account. But if it was, you would see over here, here's your month to date sold in the sales, so kind of like your income amount basically, and here's year to date. So you'll be able to look here and you can see exactly how much you've used every month and what your sales are for that. So I find this screen to be really interesting. Um, you can also come over here and change this if you use the whiteboard um, function or you can set a reminder for this if you wanted to for any reason. So this is kind of mostly how to set up and make sure you have everything entered in to the, the inventory screen. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, again, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, you can either email me or comment below. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.